Welcome back everyone to Behind the Arc Basketball on YouTube. Last month in the month of May, I released my first rankings video on my college basketball way too early top 25 predictions for the 2020-21 college basketball season. If you didn't catch my first video back in May, feel free to catch up with that one and watch it as well. I'll put the link down in the description below here to my first rankings video back from May. But now to the second video here of my rankings, which I'm recording now in the month of June of 2020. I plan on releasing an additional rankings video in August as well. That will happen after the NBA withdrawal deadline, which has been pushed back now to August 17th. And I do plan on doing another rankings video around September or October as we get closer to the start of the college basketball season. But before we get into my top 25 rankings in more detail today, I'll note the changes throughout this video here for my last video that I did my rankings on. So we have one team here that dropped out of the rankings for my last video that happened to be the Ole Miss Rebels as they lost their number three scorer Blake Hinson to the transfer portal over to Iowa State. So they dropped out of the top 40 of my rankings here as I'm going to give you guys the 15 teams that just missed out on my top 25 going from number 40. To number 26. We'll take a look at that first before we get to the top 25. Number 40, the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets. They remained in place. They stayed at number 40. Number 39, the Oklahoma Sooners. Same thing with them. Stayed at number 39. Number 38, new team to the rankings here, the Alabama Crimson Tide. We're still awaiting to see John Petty Jr. with his decision to see if he'll come back to Alabama. Year two, though, with head coach Nate Oates, this should translate into a much better season defensively for the Crimson Tide as well as cutting down the turnovers offensively. They are new to my top 40 rankings list here, number 38. Number 37 on the list, the Illinois Fighting Illini. They go at one spot from the last rankings as they are still awaiting NBA draft decisions from Ayo Dasumu and Kofi Coburn. If both of these players do head back to Illinois, the Fighting Illini here ha have a great chance to move up inside my top 25. Number 36 goes out to the Satan Hall Pirates. They remained in place from the last rankings. They're still awaiting the NBA draft decision, though, of their number two score and number two rebounder from this past season with Sandro Mabakalashvili. Number 35 goes to the Oklahoma State Cowboys. They went down nine spots from the last rankings video. They have a 2021 NCAA tournament ban currently. Oklahoma State does have the chance to appeal that, though. Good news with Cade Cunningham staying. Now, I'm not basing them dropping the rankings because of their NCAA tournament ban. The reason why is because they lost their number five score from this past season with Yor Ane, who he announced that he would transfer. So, they dropped down nine spots from the last rankings a month ago as Yor Ane happened to be one of the players on the rosters. Now, Oklahoma State has very few players who they're returning from this past season over to this upcoming season here. A lot of new faces coming in for the Cowboys or players that didn't really receive much playing time. Number 34, the LSU Tigers. They went up one spot from the last ranking. Still a lot here that we don't know about yet. Still waiting for NBA draft decisions from three players, Trenton Wofford, Javante Smart, and Darius Days. Number 33 is the Yukon Huskies. They went up one spot from the last of these rankings. Number 32, the Florida Gators. They went down three spots as they happen to lose their starting point guard. Number three score from this past season with Andrew Nemhard as he transferred over to Gonzaga. Number 31, the Indiana Hoosiers also going down. They went down five spots from the last rankings. And Indiana lost their number three score, Justin Smith, who transferred over to Arkansas. Number 30, the Arizona State Sun Devils. Arizona State moving up two spots from the last rankings. They're still awaiting the NBA draft decisions of their top two scores from this past season with Remy Martin and Alonzo Verge. Number 29, the Providence Friars. They moved up two spots as well. Same as number 28 with Michigan. They also moved up two spots as they are awaiting on an NBA draft decision here from their leading scorer, Isaiah Livers who when he was on the court last season for Michigan, Michigan went 14-7 and seven with Livers, but without them, the Wolverines only went 5-5. Five and five. Number 27, the Richmond Spiders, as they went up one spot here. Big news for Richmond. The number two ball stealer in the country, Jacob Gilliard, withdrew from the NBA draft. He is heading back over to Richmond. That means that the Spiders will have five seniors in their starting five for this upcoming season. And number 26, the Arkansas Razorbacks, they moved up seven spots from the last of these rankings. Number three score for Indiana, Justin Smith, happened to transfer over to Arkansas here as Arkansas was able to jump up seven. So that's the rankings there, 15 teams that just missed the cut from number 40 to number 26. Now we'll take a look here at my top 25 list 
for everybody as we'll start off at number 25. Here we go. Number 25 is the Rutgers Scarlet Knights. They stayed in place when number 25 on the last month of these rankings. So one of the big surprises from this past season with Rutgers, they made history in 2020, cracked the AP Top 25 poll for the first time since 1979, leaves Oregon State now with the longest AP Top 25 drought, which now dates back to 1990. But Rutgers will have another shot here to see if they'll make the NCAA tournament. Looked like everything was going their way last season to do that. Would have been their first tournament appearance since 1991, but unfortunately COVID-19 had the strike, and that's when we did not have an NCAA tournament in 2020. So if all goes well for this upcoming season here for Rutgers, they'll get their first NCAA tournament bid in 30 years. And also they landed a four-star recruit as well, their highest recruit in 12 years with Cliff Amarui coming into the roster. Rutgers will be returning their top two scores as well with guards Ron Harper Jr. and Geo Baker. I've got them at number 25. Taking a look here as we move to number 24 on the list, staying in place at 24, the Louisville Cardinals. As the Cardinals lost a ton of pieces in the offseason, they're going to have zero starters back, but head coach Chris Mack benefiting tremendously from the transfer portal, hopping on board for this upcoming season. One of the top transfers in all college basketball, Carly Jones. Coming to the squad here, a grad transfer, a big South player of the year in 2020. He averaged 20 points per game, 5.5 assists per game for Radford this past season. Also coming in a transfer from San Francisco, his name is Charles Menlin. The Cardinals also getting back center Malik Williams, sophomore guards David Johnson and Samuel Williamson who should have a ton more playing time for this upcoming season. Williamson had flashes of having potential star potential there as he had a conference career high 14 points shooting 5 for 6 from the floor against Clemson, whereas David Johnson was magnificent in the game against Duke where he had 17 points in the first half as David Johnson has a chance to break out for this upcoming season for Louisville. I've got them at number 24. Now we'll take a look here. Number 23 on the list goes out to the Houston Cougars as they happen to move down 7 spots from the last of these rankings here for Houston. They suffered a major loss in these rankings when it was announced that their number two rebounder and starter, Fabian White, will most likely miss this upcoming season due to an ACL injury. So that is a massive loss there for the Houston Cougars. The Cougars already taking hits in the offseason when they lost their leading rebounder, Nate Hinton, to go to the NBA draft. Guard DeJon Jarreau also, we still don't know his decision. He's yet to announce his decision whether he'll head back to Houston or go to the NBA draft. Jarreau is looking like a starter for this upcoming season. He averaged 9 points per game last season, expected to be a starter for the Cougars. Houston will basically be small ball for this upcoming season unless they bring in a, uh, a big here from the transfer portal. They are loaded though with guards around the perimeter. Leading scorer Kayla Mills, he got hot late last season. Quinton Grimes, former transfer from Kansas. He is back. He has the chance to be a break, breakout candidate here for the Cougars. And also, Houston has just shown that they can light it up from the perimeter as well. They've had the best three-point shooting team in America now for three seasons in a row. They should be even better for this upcoming season, adding in a transfer from Idaho named Cameron Tyson. He shot just under 43% from three-point range two seasons ago for Idaho. I still got Houston as my pick to win the American. They are at number 23. Now we'll move over here. Number 22 in these rankings happens to be the Texas Tech Red Raiders. Texas Tech going down eight spots from the last of these rankings. The reason why the loss of their number two score, Davide Moretti, with his decision that he would play basketball overseas in his native country of Italy. So that's what happened here to Texas Tech. Bumped them down eight spots with Davide Moretti leaving the program. But Texas Tech's had a roller coaster of an offseason. The hope is for now here for Chris Beard is that he can hopefully get a waiver granted by the NCAA for ex-Georgetown guard Mac McClung to come in and play for this upcoming season. Currently, McClung, though, is a sit-out transfer. Texas Tech will also be bringing in Marcus Santos Silva, who played for VCU. All he needs to do is just pass his summer classes to put him into graduate status. Acquiring Santos Silva is going to be huge here for the Red Raiders as he'll take over the spot of uh, Chris Clark, who happened to be the leading rebounder for this past season. Replacing Jemias Ramsey, that's going to be a tough task here, the leading scorer from this past season. But they got two solid guards coming back for Texas Tech. Kyler Edwards and Terrence Shannon, their number three and four scorers. Shannon here has a chance to build off his solid freshman season. It has breakout potential as well. Alongside Shannon and Edwards will be coming in here. Some big-time recruits coming in inside the top 
top 35. They're going to get a five-star shooting guard, Namari Burnett coming in, and also a small forward four-star, Mikey Micah Peavy. The Red Raiders will also get in a key transfer from UNLV. His name is Joel Tomway, as he played for UNLV back in 2018-19, averaged just under 12 points per game. The hope here for the Red Raiders as well is to get a hold of Joel Tomway's younger brother. His name is Jonathan Kuminga, who happens to be the number one recruit in the class of 2021, but recently classified over to the class of 2020 to play college basketball for this upcoming season. A lot of unknowns here still this offseason for Texas Tech with a bunch of new faces and transfers coming into the program. So I bet you that as far as their status here in the rankings, it is not done. They should be moving in a direction here during the next rankings for Texas Tech. I've got them at number 22 right now with a lot of question marks coming in for this season if they can get a hold of some more players being eligible as transfers. Now I'll take a look here at number 21. As this happens to be the Oregon Ducks talking about transfers. They just got one. Has to sit out, though, currently at the moment. As Oregon went up two spots from the last rankings, they just got a transfer over from St. John's. Their leading scorer, LJ Figueroa, who transferred over to Oregon. Currently, Figueroa is a transfer um, that will be a sit-out, but he's hoping to receive a waiver to play this season. The Ducks will be, um, they have a massive loss to deal with, though, with Peyton Pritchard. As he went to graduation, but Dana Altman, once again, great job getting transfers here over from the transfer portal. They're going to get Amari Hardy from UNLV here, grad transfer, average 14.5 points per game. He is the older brother of Jalen or Jaden Hardy, who's projected to be a top five recruit in the class of 2021. The Ducks also getting two key forwards for this upcoming season. Eugene Amarui over from Rutgers, who was a leading scorer back in 2018-19 for the Scarlet Knights, and also getting the leading scorer for Duquesne back in 2018-19 with Eric Williams Jr. Both of those players happen to be forwards. And Oregon's perimeter, it should still be solid for this upcoming season. Coming back, guards, Chris Duarte and Will Richardson. Richardson has a chance to break out. Also, don't forget about the big man. Should improve 6'11", and Folly Dante for the Oregon Ducks. Alongside a couple of players here that should be added into the rotation once again with Chandler Lawson, Addison Patterson, and C.J. Walker. As the Oregon Ducks should be able to have a good season, in my opinion, here. And if there's a player that could break out, I'm going to guess that it's going to be Will Richardson for this upcoming season for Oregon. I like the Ducks right now on number 21. Now move over here. Number 20 in these rankings happens to go to the St. Louis Billikens as I've got them moving up two spots from the last ranking. So bold prediction here. I'm going with St. Louis over Richmond. While Richmond might be the favorite by many analysts as far as the favorite team in the, in the A-10 for this upcoming season, Richmond starting five. Entire starting five heading back as seniors. I'm going to go here. Give St. Louis some love at number 20. As they will get their own starting five back as well for the Billikens. This team should be a 25 plus win team for this upcoming season here. As they look to build off their red hot five game winning streak to close out last season. Both three year starters. Good news here for St. Louis. Jordan Goodwin who's a guard and center Hassan French. They'll both be heading back over to St. Louis. And this is key here because rebounding is massive with these two players for the Billikens. They're going to be tough. They're going to be gritty. They're going to be a monstrous force for this upcoming season on the boards. French had a career-high 24 rebounds last season against Belmont. While Goodwin, he was unstoppable in last season's game against Richmond. Good, Goodwin went off for 26 points and 9 rebounds in a 74-58 victory over the Spiders. Now, French and Goodwin both led the A-10 statistically by going number one and number two in rebounds in the conference this past season. Also coming back will be Javante Perkins, a forward for St. Louis. He averaged 20.8 points per game during the final games of the past season. Also coming back, sophomore point guard Yuri Collins. He led all point guards as a freshman this past season in assists in college basketball for freshmen. And also, adding into the lineup here, Gibson Jimerson. He should be healthy back from an injury. He played 10 games, averaging just under 11 points per game. And also, Jimmy Bell Jr. should be improving here for St. Louis inside the low post as well. Do not sleep on the Billikens. If they can improve their free throw shooting, they could be a bracket buster come tournament time in March. I've got them at number 20. Now we'll move on here. Number 19 in the rankings goes out to the West Virginia Mountaineers. West Virginia moving up two spots with Bob Huggins' squad here. Young roster from this past season should be able to continue to improve for this upcoming season here. West Virginia will be returning four out of their five starters from this past season. Their leading scorer, leading rebounder, Oscar Shibway, he is back. 
he nearly averaged a double-double as a freshman. The Mountaineers also looking to be one of the toughest teams in the nation when it comes to competing on the boards here with Sheway and also Derek Culver added to the mix. Both of these players were top five in the Big 12 in rebounds per game this past season. As a team, though, West Virginia struggled from three-point range. That was the thing that they needed to generate more offense for as they finished dead last among power conference teams last season in three-point shooting percentage. They shot the ball low 28.6% from behind the arc. If they can improve the three-ball, this West Virginia Mountaineers squad can be dangerous for this upcoming season. I've got them at number 19 for now. Now we'll move over here, number 18 on the list happens to be the Texas Longhorns. They happen to move up one spot from the last of these rankings. So there's going to be a major problem here. If Texas happens to land another NIT bid and not an NCAA tournament bid for Shaka Smart. The reason why is because everybody is back for this upcoming season for Texas. Zero players leaving the squad. They're going to bring back 12 players and then they'll add in a five-star recruit as well with Greg Brown. So anything less than here than an NCAA tournament bid for this upcoming season would most likely mean the end of the Shaka Smart era at Texas. I like them right now on number 18. Now moving on to number 17 here. Happens to be the Ohio State Buckeyes. They went up one spot from the last of these rankings a month ago. The Buckeyes did happen to suffer massive losses in the offseason. Their leading scorer, leading rebounder Kayla Wesson deciding to leave for the NBA draft. His younger brother Andre Wesson also won't be back as well. And also DJ Carton who uh happened to transfer from Ohio State to Marquette. And also, Luther Muhammad happened to transfer as well to Arizona State. Alonzo Gaffney also transferring too. So a lot of pieces here that Chris Holtman needed to replace in the offseason. And he was able to do it with a couple of key transfers coming in for this upcoming season. They're going to add in the grad transfer. Seth Town, 6'8", 4", who averaged 16 points per game back in 2017-18 with a Harvard Crimson. Also a key transfer coming in from the California Golden Bears, Justice Suing, who averaged over 14 points per game back in 2018-19 for Cal. The third transfer coming in, Abel Porter, a guard from Utah State, as he'll look to help out the Buckeyes from the bench. So it's going to be a tough task here to replace Kayla Wesson, but the pickup of these key transfers has helped out a ton for the Buckeyes here to get them right back into the top 25. I've got them now at number 17. Now we'll take a look here. Number 16 on the list happens to go to the UCLA Bruins. They move up four spots from the last rankings. As this is what happened here. The reason why they move up four spots, they, they're able to get a waiver here for the transfer from Kentucky. Johnny Ju Zhang, who will be a sophomore for this upcoming season. Ju, Ju Zhang was granted a waiver by the NCAA to be eligible for this upcoming season here for the Bruins. So he didn't really have much of an impact as a freshman at Kentucky, but he was basically buried on the team's depth chart. But Ju, Ju Zhang will have multiple opportunities here for this season at UCLA. He was a top 30 recruit in the class of 2019. The Bruins happen to still be awaiting for a big NBA draft decision coming up from their leading scorer, Chris Smith, as well, who will be the only se senior in this upcoming season's roster if Chris Smith does happen to stay. If Chris Smith does stay, UCLA should be looking good. He was the catalyst this past season to a rem remarkable turnaround for the Bruins. Last season's leading score for the Bruins was Jalen Smith. Jalen Hill will also be back as well. He was the leading rebounder for this past season. The Bruins should also uh, at least have four out of their five players back this upcoming season. The fifth starter, of course, being Chris Smith pending his NBA draft decision. The hope for Smith, though, is to come back for the Bruins to have a possible shot at a deep run for this upcoming tournament. Now we'll move over here. Number 15 on the list. As we stay in the Pac-12, happens to be the Stanford Cardinal. They move up two spots from the last of these rankings. So we still don't know here with Tyrell Terry whether he's going to go to the NBA or head back to Stanford. But right now, this ranking is with the assumption of Ty Ty Tyrell Terry coming back to Stanford. We don't know what his decision is yet, though. But if he does come back, Stanford will have back their entire starting lineup. As the leading scorer from this past season, Oscar Da Silva, He'll be back, and also Stanford should be even better when they bring in a five-star freshman coming in with Zaire Williams, who should be able to make an immediate impact as well. So heading in for this upcoming season, Stanford, they're hoping to get to their first NCAA tournament since 2014, and we will see if they can snap that NCAA tournament drought. Now we'll move on. Number 14 on the list 
goes out to the Creighton Blue Jays. Creighton moving up one spot from the last ranking. So Creighton looked like a top five team when the season ended in, uh, in March, but that all changed when their leading scorer, Tyshawn Alexander, announced that he would enter the NBA draft and not come back to Creighton. The Blue Jays, though, should still have a solid perimeter around these two shooters right here. Guards Marcus Zigorowski and Mitch Ballack, who ranks second and third in the Big East in three-point shooting, both expected to be back for Creighton. They're still waiting on an NBA draft decision of their number three scorer as well with Denzel Mahoney, but Creighton's going to have a loaded roster of guards who can shoot the ball lights out from the floor. The question is, how about their bigs for this upcoming season. That's the thing is Creighton struggle with rebounds is they're going to have a four-star recruit coming in with Ryan Kalkbrenner and also they'll have back six foot eleven Jacob Emerson who did not play last season due to injury. So that's going to be the question for this team is they're going to need some help inside a low post there with their bigs but if they can get that I like their chances for Creighton for this upcoming season with a loaded perimeter as well. I've got them at number 14. Now we'll move on here. Number 13 on the list happens to be the Tennessee Volunteers as they remained in place at 13 for the last of these rankings. So we're still waiting on the NBA draft decision of the SEC's leading shot blocker, Eves Pons. But Tennessee should be back in these rankings here after last season's rebuild. John Fulkerson, Josiah Jordan-James, and Santiago Viscovi all expected to come back for the Vols. Also, Tennessee bringing in a solid recruiting class that's ranked in the top five of college basketball. They'll get in two freshman five-star guards with Jaden Springer and Keon Johnson. Also, along with a key transfer from the Oregon Ducks with Victor Bailey Jr., Head coach Rick Barnes, he has a lot to look forward to for this upcoming season as far as how deep this roster will be from top to bottom. I've got Tennessee at number 13. Now we'll move on, number 12 in the rankings. Staying in place is the North Carolina Tar Heels. So UNC should be right back in these rankings after just an unfortunate season, just disappointing for Roy Williams coaching this team last year. But North Carolina should be back in place. The Tar Heels, though, losing five players from last season's roster. Of course, the most notable being Cole Anthony. But coming into the mix here will be three five-star recruits. Point guard Caleb Love sliding into Cole Anthony's place for this upcoming season. And then two bigs with Dayron Sharp and Walker Kessler with all these, these three recruits happen to rank inside the top 20 of their recruiting class for this uh, for coming in. For the class of 2020. But Garrison Brooks. He's going to look to see if he can have a monster season for UNC. He averaged just under 17 points per game in this past season. Eight and a half rebounds as well. And Armando Baycott. He should be able to improve for his sophomore season. And it's just going to be a fierce size there as far as the boards once again for North Carolina the size of Baycott and Brooks that's going to be tough to compete against along with the two freshman centers Dayron Sharp and Walker Kessler on the boards there as they should be one of the top teams in the nation for this upcoming season as far as rebounds in the country I've got North Carolina at number 12 now we'll move on number 11 on the list of Florida State Seminoles so I've got them at number 11 here they happen to lose a lot but I feel like they're able to put the pieces together. As Florida State will lose their top two scorers, Devin Vassell and Trent Forrest. And also they're going to lose Patrick Williams to the NBA draft. And center Dominic Olenicek as well to graduation. But still, even losing four players from this roster, I like the pieces that still remain. This team was deep from this past season. They had nine players that averaged over four points per game. And They'll be rotational players now to be starting players for Florida State. So I like this right here. One thing that proved it is Devin Vassell. He only averaged four and a half points per game during his freshman season, but that number boosted up to just below 13 points per game in his second season as he went from being a bottom scorer for Florida State freshman season to being the number one scorer for the Seminoles during his sophomore season. But this season here... Florida State will have players that will have an increased role in their roster, just like MJ Walker, Malik Osborne, Raekwon Gray. They'll be back here for the roster. And then they're going to add in a big-time recruit, Scotty Barnes, coming in, a power forward. He's a five-star recruit inside the top ten of his recruiting class, coming in as a freshman. Scotty Barnes should be able to start right away for the Seminoles, bound to make an instant impact. And I like Florida State here to keep up with North Carolina, Duke, and Virginia at the top of the ACC, I've got them at number 11. Now we'll move on, keeping it up with the ACC, three in a row we got here. Number 10, 
the Duke Blue Devils staying in place here at number 10 from the last ranking. So Duke did happen to lose a ton in the offseason, departing seven players from the roster. But Duke's going to get back there uh, for this upcoming season. Matthew Hurt and Wendell Moore. These are going to be the two key pieces for this upcoming season here, along with Jordan Goldwire, who will be a senior for Duke. But the most notable losses happen to be the top two scores from this past season with Vernon Carey and Trey Jones. Also, Cassius Stanley, who happened to be the number three scorer, actually left as well to go to the NBA. But Duke bringing in a strong recruiting class, number top three in the nation right now for Duke, as they're going to bring in five-star recruits here. Jalen Johnson, Jeremy Roach, DJ Stewart, all coming in as freshmen. Those are the five stars, and they got three four-star recruits as well with Jamin Brakefield, Mark Williams, and Henry Coleman III as Duke will have a young roster, but they're going to have to lean on Matthew Hurt and Wendell Moore to carry this team if they can take the next step here for Duke. I've got them right now at number 10 in my rankings. Number 9 now goes out to Sparty here, the Michigan State Spartans, as they remained in place as well. The big question here is whether double-double machine Xavier Tillman will be coming back to here for Michigan State for this upcoming season. So that's the thing they're waiting on. Also, the Spartans are also waiting on an NBA draft decision. Their number three score, Aaron Henry. But here's the good news, though. They could possibly get back Joshua Langford, who he did not play last season due to injury. I'm surprised that he's even thinking about playing here um, still for Michigan State. But Joshua Langford averaged 15 points per game in 13 games back in the 2018-19 season. He is hoping to return for this upcoming season for Tom Izzo's squad. That would be massive if he can get back, uh, back fully healthy and back on the court there. Another major question, who will be able to fill in the point guard role for Cassius Winston for this upcoming season? Foster Lawyer hasn't really panned out to take the right steps during his college career here at MSU. It looks like it could possibly be Mark Rocket Watts here to possibly be the next best fit in line to translate over from shooting guard over to the point guard and lead this team for this upcoming season. Rocket Watts also looking like he could possibly be a breakout candidate for this upcoming season. He happened to average just under 18 points per game during the last four games of the season. Marcus Bingham Jr., he'll be back as well. Malik Hall, both of these players should be able to continue with an upward trend for their second season here for Malik Hall. And also the Spartans will be getting a much-needed transfer to boost up this team. Joey Hauser who averaged just under 10 points per game back at Marquette in 2018-19. He shot the ball just under 43% from three-point range. He looks to provide a spark for Michigan State inside the starting five. As we don't know what yet Michigan State's roster will entail, but hopefully we'll have a better picture around mid-August or so, right after the NBA draft would draw a deadline to see if Xavier Tillman will be coming back or will be going to the NBA draft. Now we'll move over here. Number eight in the rankings happens to be the Kentucky Wildcats as they remain in place at number eight. So Kentucky happened to acquire the best player in the transfer portal currently with seven-foot center from Wake Forest, Olivier Saar. At this time of this video, though, Kentucky is still awaiting on whether Olivier Starr can be granted a waiver by the NCAA to play for this upcoming season. The Wildcats will lose their top six scores in this past season's team, though. But if there's any coach that can put together the pieces and start from scratch, it is Coach Cal for Kentucky. As the good thing here is Kentucky will be bringing in the number one ranked recruiting class in all college basketball. Six top 100 recruits coming in. It is headlined by small forwards B.J. Boston and Terrence Clark inside the top 10. And also Kentucky adding in a point guard as well with De Devin Askew. And then also a power forward with Isaiah Jackson. Another power forward with Lance Ware. And a small forward with Cameron Fletcher. Those are the six recruits coming in. Also, um, coming into Kentucky, a uh, transfer from Creighton, Davion Mintz, who averaged just under 10 points per game. He'll be a senior for this upcoming se season as he looks to add experience to the roster. And also, the only player returning from this past season happened to be Keon Brooks, who would like to take a step up here in year two for Kentucky as he should be able to see an increased playing role as well in Coach Cal's squad. So a bunch of new faces here for Kentucky. It means that there's a lot of potential NBA draft prospects as well for the class of 2021 on this roster here as I've got them right now at number eight. Now move over, number seven in the rankings. Happens to go out to the Wisconsin Badgers. They remain idle as well. As what an incredible turnaround for Wisconsin. They started out 5-5 five and five this past season. Finished on an eight-game win streak to win a share of the Big Ten regular season title. 
So the Badgers roster is going to be loaded for this upcoming season. They're going to lose only one player to graduation, which happens to be their number six score in the roster from this past season. Brevin Pritzel. That's the only player that they're missing. So Brevin Pritzel it will not be playing at Wisconsin, but coming back to the team will be Nate Reavers, Aline Ford, Demetric Trice, and Brad Davison. Also, Micah Potter will be back as well, the center for Wisconsin, as he averaged just under 14 points per game from the floor during his final games of last season. Wisconsin is going to have a ton of experience here on their roster with six seniors for this upcoming season. Now we move over here. Number six on these rankings... It goes out to the Virginia Cavaliers. Virginia remaining pl in place at number six. So right now we're still awaiting the NBA draft decision of seven foot one center Jay Huff, who happened to be the number four scorer from this past season. So we're still awaiting for that. But for this upcoming season here, Virginia, with their lack of firepower offensively, it should be answered with a transfer coming in. Now coming in for Virginia, Marquette Ford, Sam Hauser, who averaged. Back in 2018-19 uh, for Marquette, just under 15 points per game and over 7 rebounds per game for the Golden Eagles. While doing that, he shot the ball at 40% from 3-point range. So, he's going to be taking the spot of Mamadi Diakite for this upcoming season for for uh, Sam Hauser. But other than Diakite, the Cavaliers only lost one other player with Braxton Key from the roster. Virginia, they should be one of the toughest teams in the nation to score on because this defense still looks like it's going to be loaded. Heading back to Virginia for this upcoming season, three starters that they should be able to retain with Kihei Clark, Tomas Wooden Tunsai, and also... They're going to have into the mix shooting guard Casey Marcel. Should be able, uh, he should be able to take the step up as well to improve for this upcoming season for the Cavaliers. Virginia able to bring in two recruits as well as four-star recruits. Jabri Abdurrahim and also Reese Beekman into the roster here for Virginia. The Cavaliers can translate this season or this past season's defense over to uh, this upcoming season and improve that offense, which they should here. Adding in a key transfer with Sam Hauser over from Marquette. This team looks like they could be back to their defending national champion status with winning the title back in 2019. And now we'll take a look here. Number five as we go inside my top 25 rankings. Now at number five, it's the Villanova Wildcats. As they remain in place here at number five. So Villanova, massive loss that they lost their leading scorer and also the Big East three-point shooting leader from this past season with Sadiq Bey heading to the NBA draft, but it was expected. But aside from Sadiq Bey, everybody else coming back for this upcoming season for Villanova. This, chance ha uh, this team has a great shot to possibly win the national title. As the Wildcats will be getting back four starters here with Colin Gillespie. Jermaine Samuels, Justin Moore, and Jeremiah Robinson Earl. All four of these starters averaged over 10 points per game last season. Also adding into the mix, junior Cole Swider. He'll be back. He should be able to continue to improve for the Wildcats. Also a key transfer over from Tulane. Uh, his name is Caleb Daniels. He averaged just under 17 points back for Tulane back in 2018-19. So Villanova still going to be solid defensively for this upcoming season. As far as Villanova, what they have to offer, it's all about how they, how they shoot the three ball and how efficient they are from behind the arc for this upcoming season. Of course, Jay Wright squads, they always rely high upon that perimeter shot from behind the arc. So Villanova, if they want a chance to win the national title, they just got to light it up this season from behind the arc if they want to be on the top of these rankings. Right now, I've got them at number five because that loss at Sadiq Bey, that is massive from the team as far as their three-point shooting. Now we'll take a look here inside the top four to rankings. At number four right now, I get the Iowa Hawkeyes. We got a big decision that still lies as they are still at number four of these rankings. It lies here with whether Luca Garza, if Luca Garza will be back as he averaged 23.9 points per game this past season. He was ranked number five in college basketball in points scored per game. Whether Luca Garza will be coming back for his senior season, if Garza does happen to come back, this team has a chance to be Final Four potential right here. Luca Garza should be the obvious pick for National Player of the Year in the preseason, but the Hawkeyes should have one of the most explosive offenses in all college basketball if Garza does return. If he does come back, joining Luca Garza will be guards Joe Wieskamp and C.J. Frederick. Frederick led the Big Ten as a freshman, shooting 46% from three-point range. Also coming back for this upcoming season, 
will be Joe Toussaint and Connor McCaffrey as the Hawkeyes. Also adding it to the mix as well, redshirt senior Jordan Bohannon who only played 10 games this past season. He was a starter, though, during his first three seasons with the Hawkeyes. When he's healthy, he can provide a spark as well from behind the arc there with Bohannon. Iowa's offense is going to be lights out, I feel like, for this upcoming season. Going to give opposing defenses fits for this season. But if Iowa can tighten up defensively, this Hawkeyes team here could be the real deal. They have the chance to land themselves the first national title if they can improve their defense for this upcoming season. And if Luca Garza does uh, come back on the roster for this year for Iowa. Now we'll take a look here. Number three, as we stick with the Midwest, happens to be the Kansas Jayhawks. They remain in place at number three. So the Jayhawks, they suffer major hits here in the offseason. Leading score, Devon Dotson, going to the NBA draft. Also, their big man, Yadoka Azabuki, graduating from Kansas as he led college basketball and shooting percentage from the floor. But even losing their top two players on the roster from this past season here, Kansas, they should be one of the best teams defensively in all college basketball for this upcoming season. Heading back to the Jayhawks will be Marcus Garrett, Achai Agbaji, and David McCormick. Um, coming off a defensive player award as well for 2020 is Marcus Garrett. He will be the preseason pick, in my opinion, to repeat once again in 2021. Christian Brown should also be able to take the step up as well during his sophomore season as he showed flashes from behind the arc this past season, including making six three-point shots against K-State and also four triples against Oklahoma State and also should be improving for this upcoming season. Tristan Anaruna as a sophomore, he looks to make the jump as well. And Kansas here with a key recruit coming in, Bryce Thompson, top 30 recruit at the point guard position here. Kansas will be loaded as far as wings on the roster. They're going to probably have to play at small ball for this upcoming season, but still, they're going to have a deep roster for this season here for Bill Self and the Kansas Jayhawks. Now we'll take a look here, number two on the rankings as we're down to two. Happens to be the Gonzaga Bulldogs. They remain idle here in number two. Gonzaga's number one, two, and four scores from this past season, though. Philip Petrushev, Corey Kisper, and Joel Ayai. All three of these players did happen to, to declare for the NBA draft, so we're still awaiting for their NBA draft decisions. Also, Gonzaga will be losing at least three more players here with Killian Tilly, Admin Gilder, Ryan Woolridge, all out the door for Gonzaga, but. Even if Gonzaga does happen to lose Petrushev, Kisper, and Ayai as well, Gonzaga will be my favorite still to win the WCC once again. No shocker here, as coming back to the Zags will be power for Drew Timmy. He'll be back for a second season. And also coming back uh, for Gonzaga as well as far as uh, Drew Timmy here but coming into Gonzaga they're going to get a top 10 recruiting class it's going to be a five-star point guard coming in with Jalen Suggs coming in here should be able to make an instant impact for Gonzaga and also the Bulldogs adding in two four-star recruits coming up with shooting guard Dominic Harris in small four Julian Strother at most I see this Gonzaga team probably losing at most four games for this upcoming season and that means there's only one team left here in my rankings video of June of 2020. And at number one happens to be the Baylor Bears once again. They retained the number one spot that they had back in the month of May. So they're right now still at number one. We're still awaiting for NBA draft decisions, though, from their top two scores for the Bears. As it happened to be Jared Butler, who averaged 16 this past season, and Masio Teague, who averaged just under 14. The Baylor Bears spent five weeks this past season ranked at number one. Baylor will happen to lose their leading rebounder, Freddie Gillespie, also a guard with Devontae Bandu, but the Bears are expected to, re to return at least two of their starters with Mark Vital and Davian Mitchell. Vital was named a finalist for 2020 Defensive Player of the Year last season. And also, Baylor will be adding in two four-star recruits as well with power forward Dane Danja and also a point guard with LJ Cryer. So the Bears are going to get some perimeter help as well there with a transfer over from Presbyterian. His name is Adam Flagler. And uh, Flagler averaged just under 16 points per game back in 2018-19. So if Jared Butler and Masio Teague do stay for the Baylor Bears, this team will have a major boost in scoring production if they do both stay. I've got them here at number one in my rankings as the Bears will go into the season here, in my opinion, with one of the best defense in all college basketball. So that's a wrap here to this video, my second edition 
my college basketball way too early top 25 rankings predictions video for 2020 21 college basketball season this video happened to be recorded in june of 2020 I plan on releasing an updated ranking video once again around August or so, around mid-August, after the NBA draft withdrawal deadline on August 17th. And I also plan on releasing an additional rankings video around September or October as we get closer to the start of the college basketball season. Don't forget to check out the other video if you haven't done so already, my first edition a month ago back in May. I'll put that down in the description below, and make sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe to my channel as well. Also, ring the notification bell so you can be notified when my next ranking video does happen to come out with the latest changes after the NBA Draft Withdrawal Deadline in August. Thanks so much for watching, everyone, as this is Behind the Arc Basketball on YouTube.